Hi everybody and welcome to today's hallway session. I'm coach Carolyn and today we're going to talk about why a longer swing does not equate to longer distances. Yes, a lot of people think that the further they can take the club back, the longer their swing is, the longer they'll hit the ball. But that is very far from correct. But here's the good news. It's actually much easier and also much easier on your back to not over swing and to not take the club back so far because you really don't need to. The second you start taking the club back too much, you're going to lose your body angles. It's going to look something like this. I'm going to show you this when we're taking the club back. When you're trying to turn too far, see how I'm trying to like stand up. Some people lose their footing with their front foot. Some people lose their spine angle. Some people, you know, do a reverse pivot and you really don't need all that shebang. All you need is synchronization. Synchronization is the key to contact and the key to distance. The more synced up you are, the better you're going to hit the ball and the further you're going to hit the ball. So here's my favorite drill and I've shown this before and I do want to address it again because it is so clutch. And the drill is making sure our leg structure stays good. So I was just touching on making sure you don't lose your footing. That's obviously number one. But in order to do that, we really have to understand what's going on with our hips and our shoulders and how we coil back. And I've said this before, I don't like the term turn. I like the term coiling. So coiling kind of implies that there's some resistance, that there's some stretch, that there's some wind up going on versus just, oh, let me turn, right? That's not what we want. We want to coil. So I want to again, look at my knees, look at my legs and really feel like sometimes it's even nice to brace your quad, especially your left quad a little bit, your lead quad and add setup already. And then as you're taking it back, you'll feel that now your hip is actually starting to rotate more naturally and it doesn't sway off. That's the biggest, biggest key here. We don't want sway because sway promotes an overswing. Sway promotes you losing that spine angle and those positions that we've so carefully set up in the setup. So we want to make sure that we're avoiding sway, this type of lateral sway at all costs. There's going to be a minimal amount of sway, yes, because, you know, it's a motion where you have a little bit of weight transfer, but it's not going to be this. And if you look at this distance right here, we want to make sure that this distance doesn't get a whole lot more as we're turning back. And I'm still, because my left shoulder is turning over my trail foot here, I'm still getting my weight more over my left foot, sorry, my right foot, my trail foot, um, without actually shifting my weight and swaying away from it. So we want to make sure we synchronize by flexing that left quad, by feeling like it's resisting that back turn with my shoulders. And it's, if anything, coming more forward than in, right? We don't want it to come in. And yes, people have... Talk to me about, oh, Jack Nichols' knee went in. Yes, but Jack Nichols' hip didn't sway off the golf ball. So he just had a very different swing and setup. And most people that I see making this mistake, they have a sway off and a knee in. They don't just have, you know, this type of look. So really the key is the hip. The knee looking here is, you know, not the best look, but some amazing players obviously have made it work for them. But it's not what you should try to do. And it doesn't mean that it's correct for you. Those people are incredibly talented. I mean, they can probably hit the ball backwards if they wanted to. So to reiterate, making sure you brace that left quad, that front quad. And then as you're turning back, you feel that tension. I kind of feel a tension in my hip. If you're not very flexible in your hips, this is going to give you a nice stretch. And you can almost even push against it here a little bit. It's a great stretch. I feel this all the way up into my hip. And now we're up here in our top of our backswing and we've not swayed and we have not lost our leg structure. So I hope you love this tip. And this is really going to sync you up because here is what it does. Now, when we have this really solid leg structure, it keeps our hands in front of our bodies because if we lose it, our hands can go very, very far, as you can see. We want to make sure we keep those hands in front of our chest and we have the correct ratio of shoulder turn 90, hips 45, knees half of that. And this resistance here with this leg, with this front leg and knee really helps us to do that. And now we are synced up going back and now we can stay synced up going through, which is the absolute key to contact and at a distance. I hope you guys love this video. And if you do leave me a comment below, let me know what you think. And also always, you know, feel free to suggest and ask any topics that you want me to cover. I'm always here for you guys. So cannot wait to see you guys next time.